We have had a beautiful spring here, and today I just wanted to share that with you. A glimpse into what spring has been like for us, what we've been harvesting, what we've been eating, uh, and I will also be sharing a what we eat in a week in this video. So this spring we have had, my strawberries did so well, not really enough to preserve, but we've just been picking bowl after bowl each day. Malcolm and I go out and come back with strawberries and lots of eggs. We have had an abundance of eggs this spring, which has been wonderful. We've gotten creative with them, but uh, and also asparagus, so much asparagus, uh, which is just, it's just such a special vegetable. It's one of the first things to come up in the spring, and I'm so thankful for our big asparagus beds that I planted a few years ago now, and our strawberries. There's a pocket full of them right there, <laughs> and... It's just been a nice little routine for Malcolm and I. Each morning we go out and he knows we're gonna get some strawberry snacks in the garden. And here, lots of eggs. Every day we bring in lots of eggs. <laughs> and um, so our breakfasts are pretty much always egg, egg based. And then here's some sourdough sandwich bread that I have that recipe on my blog and some jam and some eggs. We pretty much eat them every morning for breakfast. And then on this day, I am working on some mulberries, which is another thing we have had an abundance of. We always have them in the springtime here, kind of late spring into summer, or more like mid-spring, I guess I should say. And we have a very special mulberry tree here. This land has been in my family since I was a baby, so it's a little over 40 years. And this big old mulberry tree down where a big old barn used to be fell down years ago. It kind of split and it is still growing these huge, beautiful black mulberries. And the fact that it fell down makes it very easy to pick because if you know anything about mulberries, they're not the easiest to pick on these big old trees. So although it is sad that it fell down, it's kind of a blessing because it makes it very easy for us to pick a lot of mulberries. And that's what we've been doing. It's been our little morning and sometimes evening routine. Malcolm and I go down and Jason too sometimes. And we just pick, a, you know, like a big, big colander or bowl full. And I have been getting really creative with some recipes that I have posted on my blog this spring. I'll link all of those down below, but um, yeah, just a glimpse of that tree there, fallen down, but still growing strong. And then on this day, I am working on a mulberry pie, which the recipe is on my blog. And this is kind of my little photography corner set up in the kitchen, right by this nice window. I always, I shoot with natural light, always. And um, so yeah, I'm just working on this pretty, mulberry pie today it was so good um mulberries are a really special fruit to me they taste a lot like blueberries and they're related to figs i don't know if you know that but they um they're in the fig family so some people say they have a similar flavor i don't really feel that they do but uh, you know it everybody tastes things differently so anyway here's this beautiful pie I make a very rustic pie. I just fold the edges over. I think it's really beautiful and casual. And yeah, here's me taking those photos for my blog post, and I'll leave that linked down below. You can use any berry, of course, but if you're lucky enough to have mulberries and lucky enough to get enough to make a pie, it makes a, they make a really, really delicious pie. So I hope you'll give it a try. And here um, also... Bake your pies in a metal pan because they do such a good job of browning the crust and not giving it a soggy bottom. You see, I just lifted that pie right out of there. And it was after chilling because that makes it a lot easier to take photos. It's a little food photographer hack there. <laughs> there it is, all finished. And then for dinner on this night, the day that I made that pie, I... We had, this is a very typical, very casual dinner, uh, browning up some sausage. It's kind of breakfast for dinner. And 
We had some leftover baked potatoes that I just split in half and cook on a cast iron skillet. And then more eggs, because we gotta use them. And I had mine over, kind of a big salad, and it was really good. This is my kind of dinner, just really quick, easy, not fussy. And I topped it with some pickled onions that I'm, I've been keeping in the fridge constantly. We've really been into them lately. And some tahini I drizzled over. I like that as like an easy, quick salad dressing. I also drizzled over some olive oil and a little vinegar. And then, like I was saying earlier, our asparagus beds. I planted these two large raised beds with asparagus crowns, I think they're called, the roots, it's just asparagus roots, whatever you want to call them, um, I think three or four years ago now, and they are very productive, and I just love it. We go out every day. It's like magic. They just pop right up. They grow really quickly, so we just pick them each morning. Malcolm loves to snack on them in the garden, and so do I. So we've been having a lot of asparagus and eggs for breakfast. I really like that combination. And here I'm just frying some up. I love how they kind of pop around in the hot pan. They like jump a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but yep, just asparagus and eggs. Really simple breakfast that we have very often in the springtime. And then for dinner that night, I made some, well, we, Jason and I, made some kebabs. It was his idea, and I decided to get a little, I don't know, extra, if you want to call it that, and make two marinades because I really love Asian flavors. And Jason was talking about like a jerk seasoning. So we decided to just make both because we had a bunch of meat. And so he cubed it all up for me. He did the dirty work. And we put it in these separate bags uh, so that I could pour that marinade in each one. And just let I let it marinate for a couple of hours. It wasn't like an overnight thing. They're pretty flavorful marinades. I don't think they really need that long. And I took it out and skewered it up on metal skewers is what I prefer. The wooden ones are just kind of flimsy and they burn. And I just like having these old metal ones. I think they were my dad's actually. And there they are, all skewered. It's a messy job, but it's not too bad. And then I had some pineapple kind of hanging out in the fridge that needed to be used up. So I gave that its own little skewer and it was really good with the meat. And then we were out on the porch grilling. We had some beautiful weather this spring. We did a lot of grilling and we are heading into hot weather now. So I'm looking back on this fondly. I'm really gonna miss the nice mild spring weather and there they are all done. It was such a good meal. Um, I saved some of the marinade that the meat did not touch. Um, that's the Asian one. And I drizzled that over, over mine. And it was really, really good. And I made some regular rice, some spinach, and then some cauliflower rice. Jason's pretty low carb. So cauliflower rice is a common addition around here to our meals. And there's my plate. It was so, so good. I did a combo of the regular rice and the cauliflower rice. Really, really good. Nice grilled meal. And then this was my breakfast the next day. Um, a little fancier than usual, but very delicious and pretty. I just had some sourdough rye bread in the freezer, and I tossed that in the toaster. Had some guacamole and a fried egg on top, and then it's all on top of like a little salad. I've really been loving breakfast salad type things lately. Um, nice and light and good for the warmer weather. So that was my little fancy breakfast that day. And lunches around here are very, uh, we kind of joke and call them free-for-alls. We hardly ever have like a, everybody sits together and has lunch. It's kind of fun for yourself. And sometimes some of us don't even eat lunch depending on the time we eat like breakfast or dinner. But today, on this day, I made a really good wrap with some veggies and some feta and these really good organic whole wheat wraps I love to get. And it was so good. Like, this is the kind of lunch I could eat every day. And then, working on more mulberries. I'm telling you, we got pounds and pounds of mulberries this year. 
Um, and so today I'm working on some jam and I did get this recipe posted. It's a naturally sweetened jam recipe. I use um, fruit juice concentrate, apple juice concentrate. You can also use grape juice concentrate. And I use Pomona's pectin because it's, it's made to work with lower sugar recipes. And it's a delicious, really beautiful jam. So I just wash all those mulberries really well. And lay them out on, I just laid them out on these trays with some towels. Um, I don't really worry if they're dry, dry, but I just did that to kind of keep them while I was getting everything else set up. Setting up my water bath canner. And all the instructions for this are on my blog. I'll leave it linked below, wildthistlekitchen.com. And here is a glimpse of that jam in the making. I used some vanilla beans and some lemon zest. I think those flavors work really well with mulberries. And then that's that frozen apple juice concentrate. And just putting it over on the stove, boiling it. I mash up the berries before they start cooking. And then again, as they soften, I kind of mash them. I don't get them too pureed, but you can actually take like an immersion blender and really blend it if you don't like any chunks in your jam. I don't mind a few. The mulberries get really soft as they cook and they're such a beautiful color. I just love that color. It gets me every time. <laughs> and here's my canning setup. I get a little fancier than usual because I was, this was a day I was actually taking photos of this too. So there is over by my little window in the kitchen and then that's that Pomona's pectin mixed in with some apple juice concentrate. It's a little different using Pomona's than if you're used to using just like a standard pectin, but it's really not any harder. It's just a different process. And I started using it a couple years ago and it's become like second nature to me, kind of like anything, you know, you learn in the kitchen that used to be intimidating and now it's very simple. So there's all my cans ready to go in the water bath canner. And you saw that that purple mess that I made. It's just inevitable with something like mulberries, you're gonna get it splattered around. But look at that beautiful color in there. And then there was just enough left for me to have a little cook's treat. I had some sourdough sandwich bread that I toasted up and had some salted butter and some of that jam. Man, so good, such a treat. So yeah, if you want this recipe, I will have it linked down below. And yeah, just have that. I, I have a tray with a towel on it. I like to take them out and then wait for those little, little pops that we all love to hear. If you're a canner, you know what I mean. The little pings, you can see them pretty much as soon as I took them out, they were all pinging which is such a good sign such a relief and I leave them sitting here for 24 hours and then check those seals I take the rings off for storage and that's it there's my little some sourdough discard biscuits for the photo shoot and um, that recipe is, is on my blog as well but there's that beautiful jam all dressed up for my blog and then for dinner that night, after all that hard work, um, I made some shrimp and grits, which is not something we have often, but it was a suggestion of Jason's, my sweet husband. Somehow he got shrimp and grits in his mind, and I was happy to make them because we had shrimp in the freezer, we had grits in the pantry, and pretty much all the other ingredients. I think we did, he, he grabbed some peppers when he was out that day. And then I just followed a recipe loosely. I never, I'm really not like a recipe follower, says the recipe writer herself. <laughs> but I will leave the recipe that I referenced linked down below because it was really delicious. Um, and yeah, just a quick, relatively quick dinner. I think the, the grits took the longest and then just boiling down that cream sauce I browned the shrimp separately, well not brown, but just quick, quickly cooked them and then tossed them in that thickened sauce so that they didn't boil too long. Nobody likes an overcooked shrimp. And then those nice buttery grits, 
This is actually polenta that I get from Azure Standard, but it's also called corn grits. It's, it's the same thing. So it turned out really good. They were super creamy grits and that spicy shrimp cream sauce on top. It was really a delicious dinner. Highly recommend if you're a shrimp fan. I, I imagine though you could make this with like cubed up chicken. It would be really good too. If you're not a fan of the seafood. There it is all finished up with some parsley on top. Really delicious dinner. Very comforting and pretty quick. So my kind of dinner. And then here we go again. Another breakfast. <laughs> another pan full of asparagus popping around and um, more eggs. I'm telling you, we're pretty creatures of habit when it comes to breakfast. And we did have some leftover grits. So we had that with the asparagus and the eggs and it was really delicious. No meat. Um, it would have been good, but really not needed on this, on this meal. And then nothing glamorous here but very common for all of us i'm sure is just to clean out the fridge left overnight after cooking all those good meals we always have some delicious leftovers and there's little grizz standing by watching hoping for some food um, but yeah we just did like a choose your own adventure and this was mine i had some rice some of those kebabs i diced up and then some spinach and some kimchi chopped up on top it was a really good, easy dinner. Nothing like leftovers for an easy meal. And then the next night, this is on my blog, this asparagus pasta, and I made it a couple times this spring. It is such a good pasta, and it's such a unique way to use asparagus. My dad and I actually, many, many years ago, kind of just made it up. We just had fun in the kitchen like we always did and created this delicious recipe and a few years ago, I finally recreated it and wrote down, you know, everything and got it on my blog. So it's very sentimental, really special dish. And it's just a roasted asparagus pesto. So you roast the asparagus and make a pesto in the food processor. Um, you could use a blender too. Um, and on this night, I made it a little fancier. I browned some, crisp, crisped up some pancetta and you could also use bacon or prosciutto even ham would be really good and then those are all the ingredients there for the pesto i put the asparagus in there you can see it had cooled down a bit um, because i made it earlier in the day and just stuck it in the fridge but i um used some this linguine fini is what my dad and i loved and you can also use just linguine or spaghetti really any pasta that you prefer and then you just toss everything in the food processor and make this beautiful green pesto slash sauce and this recipe really requires some pasta water to thin out the sauce i always save about two cups of the pasta water so if you make it don't forget to do that because it will need it in the end and just getting that delicious pesto blended up and drizzling in some olive oil. It's really no different. It's, it's like making a regular pesto, except you're adding in roasted asparagus. And the asparagus gives it such like a creamy sauce consistency. You can see there, it's almost like a, like a hummus, like a dip consistency. And I imagine you could use it like that I'm getting that pasta cooked and then bringing it all together here. I take the hot pasta, put the pesto right on top and then add the pasta water and kind of toss it around. And I almost always need the full two cups of the hot pasta water. So like I said, if you make it, make sure you save that because it's really the secret to a really good saucy consistency. And then I just toss it around until it's creamy and saucy and then add it on a plate. I made it look a little extra fancy tonight because I was filming this and I wanted to take a pretty picture for my Instagram stories. So <laughs> I might not have made it quite this beautiful, but I don't know. I like beautiful food. It's just who I am. 
but I added that crispy pancetta on top and some burrata cheese that I had in the fridge and some arugula and basil and it was just beautiful and so delicious and then a little drizzle of olive oil because why not gilding the lily but you know we have to treat ourselves I think it's important and this was just a beautiful delicious springtime dinner made with homegrown asparagus and then the next night I didn't record any of this process I'm sorry it was a really quick um we made some almond flour, coconut flour, um, chicken tenders, and had a great big salad on the side. And that was it. Just really, really simple, nice light dinner. And there's a little jar of our garden strawberries that we've just been eating with anything all day, just snacking on them. So nice to have such fresh, tasty little berries. And these are some lemon blueberry cookies I had made for the blog and I had some dough left over frozen and I just decided to cook them. And they're like really good chewy blueberry cookies. They're made with freeze dried blueberries. I will leave that link down. Any of the recipes in this that have recipes, I will leave linked down below. And then the next night we had some grilled pork chops. This was a night that it was just Jason and I. So I grilled two pork chops. We had a big salad again and I had a couple baked potatoes and it was just really good. So that's that, what we eat in a week. And that's springtime for us. And now we're entering into summer and the berries are getting ripe. These are some black raspberries that I just love. We planted a few years ago and they're doing so well this year. We're getting a lot of them. And there's Malcolm and Jason picking berries, my cute boys. And I am going to miss spring. That is for sure, but I'm also excited for summer and for the garden. You know, we have a ton of tomatoes growing that won't be ripe for some time now, and that's my favorite thing about summer. I'm always looking forward to the tomatoes, the herbs, the cucumbers, the peppers, you know, all of those springtime veggies. And speaking of the garden, we had some sweet little visitors. These are black swallowtail butterfly um, caterpillars, and they love my fennel. I've been planting it for a few years now, and they always come. And this year we had more than ever. So I highly recommend planting these sort of ferny types of like dill and fennel, because the butterflies love to lay their eggs on them. And it's just really neat to watch them and their life cycle. And here are our cucumbers. It's just a sign of summer to me to see cucumbers on a trellis. And um, I have some beautiful artichokes. I have more planted that are just teeny tiny right now, but this one is really showing off this year and I just love the way it looks. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you've had a beautiful spring and I wish you all the best as we head into these hot, hot days of summer. I look forward to sharing more with you and I will see you in the next video.